Stanley Cups, and everybody was wearing a jersey. Not only that, we knew the cup was in the building because somebody was getting the cup that night. You know, there's no advancing to the next rounds. When you wake up tomorrow, you're either a champion or you're answering the questions about what went wrong. It felt like Armageddon was coming. I have been coming to this building since 1968 when it opened. I have never heard anything like this. The garden is raucous as anything. It's loud. I mean, it was so loud before the start of the game that you can barely hear John Amarante sing the national anthem. I'll never forget that. It's one of my favorite moments of playing, and, and I, I think back and I can, I can feel myself in that spot. It was definitely, we want the cup. We want the cup. The chant of we want the cup going up from the crowd here at Madison Square Garden. The hair on the back of your neck stood up. The energy was, was, was fantastic. It's so strange. It's like going into church on your wedding day. You know you're going to remember what happens in these walls forever. And it was sort of what Mike Keenan said in the beginning. See that parade, this video that I'm showing you? That's what it's all going to be like. And if we do that, we'll walk together forever. And here we were, finding out whether that was all going to come true or not. It's a one-game shot. The fans are standing already. I mean, out for game seven, you could sense the crowd was excited. We knew we'd have a distinct advantage if we could get that first goal. SCA slowed down by Borey, gets by him. SCA cuts in, still with a puck. Nice pass to Zubal. Boom, right away, off. Oh, my God, what a beautiful feed it was. Zubal, feeds Leach. I were putting my skate behind my stick, settling the puck. I knew I had the empty net, and I just guided it into the net. Leach open. just standing straight up with my arms up in the air and that was it one nothing when that first goal now is scored you can feel in the building the expectations building and building and building it was such a cool feeling to to know that we were up one nothing in game seven but it was a chippy game there was a lot going on but anderson got hurt on the play he's down we ended up with a power play, still in the first period, and Kovalov made an awesome move getting into the zone on the left side. And I know that I had tried to go glove side on Kirk McLean a few times, and I knew if I had the same opportunity again, I was going to try stick side, and, and that's exactly where I shot it. Luckily enough, it went in. Nothing. It's looking good. We start the second period. And all of a sudden, Linden scores. It's going to be a break for Trevor Linden. He moves to the net, and he scores! And the Canucks have scored to cut the Rangers' lead. We have a, a one-goal lead. It's still optimistic, and then Messier puts one in. Newton's back in. I'm not sure, quite sure if he actually touched the puck or not, but uh, it doesn't matter because he got credited and it's 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 a perfect uh, fit. I really felt that was a huge goal at that time. I, I just felt that it was enough the way Richter was playing, the way the game was going. Final seconds of the second standing ovation. The Rangers are 20 minutes away. At the end of the second period, uh, Bob Raceman, the TV radio reporter for the Daily News, was there, and he said, so what do you think? And I just looked at him and I said, this is going to be the longest 20 minutes of my life. And we are set for the third period. Trevor Linden scored early in the third period on a power play, as we knew he would. Running to Cordell. He shot it. They score. As it was bad. Suddenly, he got a nail biter. Seventh game, you know, last few minutes. What's going to happen? Brown shoot, save by Richter. That 10 minutes took forever, and it took 54 years. That's what it felt like. So many tight plays throughout those entire playoffs in that game. Post being hit. Hit the post, and it's cleared by Lowe. Oh, man, Vancouver came out so close to tying it. Sticks being lifted at the last second, just getting a toe on a shot. He shoots, save Richter. This actually be happening. They're going to score a goal, Vancouver. Now I'm nervous again. 
you as a Ranger fan were really, really nervous because you realized that this was it. Boy, is this tension or what? Every time there was a whistle, I put my head down like this and I would pick it up expecting time to have gone off the clock. They hadn't dropped the puck yet. The clock was exactly where it was where I put my head down, but I'm telling you, it was torture. I remember thinking when Nathan Lafayette hits the post in the third period, is that really how, how close this is from being taken away? There was a point when one of those posts was hit during the third period where I simply thought, okay, this is how it has to be. If they're really going to win it, they're going to ring every bit of pain, anger, sweat, frustration, and any other negative, tortuous feeling you could think of out of every Ranger fan's body before it finally happens. And we have 2.44 to go in the third period. They're on their feet, fans of all ages. And my first Ranger game was 1973. My dad took me. I'll never forget who was in net. It was Eddie Jockman. They might be on their feet in their homes, in their apartments, and wherever they're watching. I was a Ranger fan once because my dad actually worked on the garden as it was under construction. 131 to go. You know, for me, the greatest memories and maybe the, the most important memories of my life were the days that I spent at the Garden with my dad watching Ranger hockey. Moving to the net, knocked away by a sliding leech. One minute to go in the third period. We watched games that we weren't going to. The road games. And road games you're watching together. When we weren't together, we were on the phone with each other. We knew that this was a very special season. We're down to 10 seconds. Ends up back behind the goal. Can I work it around? I remember the puck was going down the ice, slowly down the boards, and I looked at the clock, and there was about five seconds left, and I was like, we just won the Stanley Cup. 54 years of curses are over! No more 1940! I turned to Mike, and I dropped my stick, and I gave him a hug. I'm looking around, and, you know, the crowd is kind of mixed. I'm like, this isn't the right reaction. Oh, wait a moment. Apparently, icing was falling. I'm looking at the clock, and uh, are they going to put more time back on? We can't. This can't happen right now. It can't happen like this. They put a half a second back on the clock. It's 1.6 seconds left. And, I th and at that point, I, you know what? I don't even think I'm, I'm still realizing that this is actually potentially going to happen. You're still wondering, you know, what else could go wrong. In your rational mind, you know they're probably not going to score. But after all you've endured as a Ranger fan, you can imagine the Vancouver face-off person shooting the puck over, you know, over Richter's shoulder for the tying goal. I just felt like we had one more face-off, and we had been nailed on that one before, and it wasn't going to happen this time. You've set out your entire life to do this. Everything you've been doing in the last, you know, months and years have been pointed to this, this instant. The enormity of it starts to dawn on you. When the final buzzer sounded, the leech was in front of the net and we just hugged each other. Then we're like, you know, we couldn't believe it. I think a lot of that energy and um, happiness came out in our team, and that's what made me like kind of freak out because they, like, Adam Graves was going absolutely crazy, and then he kept on saying 1940. <laughs> I thought it was very poetic that the crowd in unison chanted 1940 as the final time to lay the demons to rest. I just remember hugging, jumping up and down, going nuts. There was a kid sitting a couple rows behind me who was in a tuxedo, and he held a sign that said, 
I missed my prom for this. That kind of like says it all. People were, were cheering and, and dancing and people were throwing confetti on the ice and it was just, you know, pandemonium. You're going to see the most beautiful piece of silver. The Holy Grail is coming out, folks. It was the moment you waited your whole life to have and you wanted to enjoy it and just soak it up. Started crying. I couldn't help it. I just, um, I get emotional now just thinking about it. We started kissing people around the section we didn't even know. They're the champions. And I just collapsed on the couch and I just started sobbing and I started crying. And everybody else that was in the house was kind of having the same reaction of, oh my God, that's it, they did it, it's over. Captain Mark of being a part of something special was awesome. Eddie Olchek! Be able to lift that thing up and look up towards the garden and the ceiling and to see the reaction of all the fans. When I picked that cup from him, it was like a feather. Just lifted it up in complete joy. It just was amazing to think that for years we have been talking about this moment and what it would mean to be here and to, and to win, and there it was. This is worth waiting for. Now I Can Die in Peace is something that I think hundreds of thousands of Ranger fans yeah. wanted to express. We just did it. It was just a culmination of, of everything that we knew about Dad waiting a long time and it was definitely the right time. We put that sign up to so the players could see how we felt about all those years of heartache. It was a heck of a celebration on the ice. This is the greatest photo for a team sport that these players will ever have. In the locker room. Get him, boys, over! Yeah, we did it! It could not have been hotter in, in the Rangers' locker room. And Adam Graves came up and poured ice cold champagne down my back. And it was one of the most spectacular sensations I've ever felt. And then uh, eventually walk out of the garden at about five in the morning and still see thousands of people on the street waiting to see uh, the players. It was totally amazing. I remember just walking with my buddies straight down 7th Avenue just saying, I cannot believe the New York Rangers are the Stanley Cup champions. See you at the parade.